You know, today we're, we're going to do the, uh, the series Imagination um, by Prophet Deckard. It's a series I wanted to do for some time, but always kind of held back on it because still putting pieces together by going through some other CD series like uh, Prophets and Prophecies, Warfare and Fasting for the End Times, um, Love and Bread for the End Times, Peace. Uh, so, you know, I just felt it was, it was time to, to do this one and uh, it's been a joy going through it after going through uh, all those other ones first. So, uh, we're going to open up in prayer and we're going to get to it today. Oh, Father God, Yahweh, we just thank you for your presence, Father. We just thank you for who you, we are in you, Father, in you, <laughs> your image, Father, your image, us, your kids, Father. And darkness, we just take authority over you. We bind you. We loose you from us. We imprison you somewhere else. You're not attached to us. You're not attached to the service. You're not attached to the words. You're not attached to what we're doing today. I loose you from all assignments. For the power and the authority that we have over you by our Father and His Son, Yeshua's name, Yeshua, Yeshua. We just loose the angels on their assignments to be able to minister and to bring forth what it is that's to bring forth and open the eyes and the ears spiritually so that we can move forward with this teaching. And praise and thank you, Father. To you, Father, all be the praise. In Yeshua's name, amen. <clears throat> all right. So, you know, this is a deep, deep subject. So what we're going to do today is we're going to put on our Holy Ghost hip waders. Does any you guys know what hip waders are? All right, I didn't see anyone move their heads, so I'm going to explain what a hip waiter is. A hip waiter is something that you put on. Now, it's a pair of rubber boots attached to another piece of rubber that you, you put in and you put it on and you put straps up and, and sometimes they're about up to here, okay? And you go into deep water, that's why we're putting our Holy Ghost, you know, hip waders on, so you can get deeper and deeper and not get wet, okay? So since we're doing imagination, right? image. Can you see yourself in a pair of hip waders? I mean, they even got the Holy Ghost emblem on them. Okay. Holy Ghost hip waders. Can you see yourself? Ah, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get, we'll get back to this. Okay. But see yourself there as we go forward. You know, imagination is such an important and important subject. You know, there's, there's so many things that can hinder us from getting into the blessings that God wants us to have. I mean, the blessings of God and having other people see that we have the blessing of God is one of the great and incredible concepts that God has to be able to have glory come on to him. It's so incredible. But we say to ourselves, how do we get blessed? I mean, and we know the word is the answer. The word is absolutely the answer. And you have to get into the word of God right? The Bible. But there's a lot of stuff in there. There's a lot of stuff in there. So, you know, going to a church twice a week, you know, isn't going to bring you the blessings of God. No, you got to get into the depth of what the Father has. You got to go deeper and deeper. Now, isn't it great that we have our Holy Ghost hip waders on, you know, so we can go deeper and deeper? See, the church doesn't know anything about this for the most part. I mean, the church, as we know, we came out of it, for most of us, is caught up in, in the feelings and these, and these images and these, and these traditions, amongst a whole bunch of other things, right? So as you're going deeper into this water, we're leaving those things behind. We're not taking those with us, okay? You can't carry a whole lot when you've got these Holy Ghost hip waders on. But the Father has a depth, okay, that you can reach, so that you can work the works of the Lord God Almighty. And that's what he wants for us. But it is to be learned. And you have to be able to transition into this. Okay? And that has a lot to do with imagination, images, transition. So, the imagination is so incredible. So incredible. 
that it gives birth to empires, it gives birth to technologies, it gives birth to fortunes, it gives birth to the good, the bad, and the ugly. I mean, imagination is pretty, it's tied to everything in this world. See, it first starts with your mind. It starts with your mind. It starts what you're thinking about. You know, what image are you making at any given time over any situation? Interesting. So how can you make an image of something? Well, you, you sit there and you can close your eyes and you can make an image of something, right? And then the way we traditionally think about it is just a, like a three-dimensional object, okay? And if you've been through any of the series, you know that one of the things that we do is we, we create an image. So we do Big Mac fries and Coke. So if you could, please indulge me. Close your eyes, except for the people in the back who are monitoring the computer. We want to keep the show going here. Bless God. So close your eyes. All right. Now ready. I'm going to help you through this. Big Mac, fries, and Coke. Three things. Okay. Now just hold on. You created an image, but we're going to keep going. I want you to see the grease on the burger. I want you to see the condensation on the Coke coming down the outside. Okay. I want to see what the tomato and the lettuce and that secret sauce. Cause it's a big Mac, right? Can you see it? All right. Open your mouth now. Sorry. Open your eyes. <laughs> what happened? I started getting caught up in that. Didn't I? Why? My stomach growled a little. My mouth is salivating. You can open your eyes, Michaela. You must really like that Big Mac fries and Coke. See, the thing is, we have to understand about the image and the mind and the imagination. It's so powerful that your flesh and your mind, when you're going through that, it does not know that it's not real. Your stomach can growl. Your, your mouth can water. It thinks it's real. That's how powerful the imagination is. That's how powerful it is that your flesh and your mind thinks it's real when you're imagining it. Such a fundamental thing to understand as we go through this teaching. So, okay, let's try it again, but now we're gonna imagine, use our imagination and have an image of a person. Okay, everyone ready? Okay, all right, even everyone out in Skype, okay? So close your eyes, and I want you to imagine a person. Don't tell anyone who it is, okay? So an image appears, and there's a person, okay? And you know what happens? Along comes what? Along comes something associated with that person. It could be what they're wearing. You'll start to construct it. You're going to tie something to that. You're going to tie what? You're going to tie maybe an emotion. You're going to tie a memory. You're going to, you're going to tie a past event to that image, okay? Okay? So, hold on, it might be joyful, right? You might laugh a little. It might could have been something that happened. It could be sad, right? So open your eyes. See, what I'm trying to explain is an image is beyond three-dimensional. An image, right, it's beyond the physical senses. See, the three-dimensional image is, is what we create, but then we have thoughts of a person and that we attach to that image. And like the fries and the Coke, and you could get the watering in your mouth and your stomach to grumble, you have memories or past events, good, bad, or ugly. Remember we talked about good, bad, or ugly? Are going to be associated, and we use the person, right? So that image is beyond just what the flesh and mind can construct, which is three-dimensional, you're now adding in other things, right, from the other kingdom, the other dimension, the other realm, and you're creating it. The thing is, the flesh and the mind will believe the image that you created is 100% real. So what you attach to that three-dimensional, to that physical image of that person, your mind and your flesh considers real and wants to react to it. Very important to understand. We attach, what we attach, right, affects the spirit world, these images. 
the images that we make. We're unaware most of the time as we walk around in these claven bodies about the image and the complexity of it. And then as we, we run it through our mind and as we run it through our heart and as we get it out of our mouth and we, when we create it and put it out there, what have we done? What have we attached to that and what have we put out there? And what influenced us to do that? Was it all us? Was it that naggy, familiar spirit that we talked about before that we just, we don't, we don't want it to influence us anymore? Did, did it influence the creation of something that came out? Image, imagination is such a fundamental, a powerful, powerful, powerful tool that we absolutely have to pick apart and understand the process and how this works. The complexity, but the simplicity of the thing. And the fact of the matter is, it works for you. And we have to make sure that we're in charge, our heart, our spirit, us. Okay? And that's what we're going to talk about today as we go through this series. Your imagination. You have to watch your pre-programming, right? In your mind, the pre-programming that's in your heart. That's where we pull from, right? To be able to attach to these images. And when we think it, and when we speak it and act it out, that's the direction that our life is going to go. So it's this battlefield that we have to protect, this internal battlefield, so that we can make sure it comes out the way that we want, so the life that we live and go for is what we expect, what we want. See, but people don't understand this to the greater degree of it. But people put things together all the time in mental images. You know, whether it's a right image or it's a wrong, wrong image. See, that's all decided by the Word of God. Did you attach the Word of God to that image? Or did you not attach the Word of God to that image? That's going to be the ultimate decider if it's right or wrong. We'll get into that as we go. But what forces are we attaching from the other realm, the spirit world, from the other kingdom, the real world, remember? We've talked about that in other series. What are we attaching to this three-dimensional image and then running it through our system and putting it out there? See, the spirit, right? Spirit is a force. It's from the other realm, the other kingdom. The mind and the flesh, they do not understand that. They understand the senses, they understand the past, the memories, and they construct that. And they want to act on what they see, see touch, taste, feel, etc., right? That's what they want to do. And when your spirit's in charge and it decides to put God's word on that and, and, and deny circumstances and go where we got to go, it doesn't understand. Okay? It doesn't understand. Spiritual forces like faith, right? That's a spiritual force. Course. The fruit of the Spirit, faith is in there too, right? But a little different. Your will, your will is a spiritual force, right? So we have to understand, are we going to use it for good or are we going to use it for evil? We have to choose. But we're choosing every single time, whether we're conscious or not, of what we're attaching to that image and what we're going to play out with that image. So it goes back to, and I have a whole list of questions here before we get into a lot of the explanation of these things. But what programming do you have from darkness? What programming? Interesting. Or do you have God's word? How does it affect the image? How does it fulfill how we create and affect our lives and other people? See, these are big factors in what direction an image is going to take you in your future. So let's jump into a little bit of it now. So 1 Corinthians 28, 9. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the, know thou the God of thy fathers and serve him with a perfect heart and a, with a perfect willing mind. Okay. And the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Okay. 
So here it is again. You have to seek him. He knows the imaginations and the thoughts. You have to seek him and make him part of that. Okay? You can't forsake him from that process. See, the God we serve understands the imaginations and the thoughts of our heart. So our heart has imaginations and thoughts. I mean, wow, what an incredible God. How incredible this is. The thoughts and the imaginations of our heart. Everybody. He knows that. He understands it. And he's looking at it. The key is to understand that your mind is the very doorway to the blessings of God. Okay? Your mind can be shut, right? And not let them in to go through the process of this imagination and attaching God's word to it and acting it out, right? It's the doorway. See, the greatest battlefield is your mind. Now, it's also said it's the biggest playground, but I consider it the biggest playground for the devil if you're losing. But it's the biggest battlefield for you and for darkness to be able to try and infiltrate you, to program you, and try and use you, trick you, so it can create something in this world. Because you yielded to it. That's what it is. See, darkness absolutely 100% understands this. I mean, they have been manipulating and perfecting their techniques, right? With our imaginations for thousands of years. I mean, we're not thousands of years old, but man's been here for thousands of years. They've been doing this over and over and over. And they got this playbook. And they got a playbook of playbooks of playbooks. They know situations. They know scenarios. All sorts of things. But it's in an effort for you to give your power and your authority to them to use. By way of affecting your image, your programming. And getting you to act out what they want you to act out. It's a giant trick. It's a charade. You have the power. You have the authority. God given. We have the win every time. But if darkness can get you to believe them, right? They get to create in this world. And we got to live it out. We don't want to do that. But we end up what? Succumbing to their tricks. We got to understand their playbook. Darkness cannot create. They need us to do it. And they need to control our imagination, our images. So, what do we do? What do we do after we talked about this? Well, we need to understand how to beat the devil, the darkness, familiar spirits. Where? Well, we, we got to beat them in our mind. That's what we said. That's where it happens. It's in our ima imagination. It's in our creation process. That's what they want. That's what they want. But here's the thing. The devil has been put under our feet. We have the victory. So if we got the victory, it begs the question, why are we not victorious? I mean, I mean, I had a win last week. You know, that's like saying I almost had a miracle. You know, why are we not victorious more often? Why are we not victorious consistently or all the time? See, familiar spirits in darkness. Again, thousands of years experience in programming us. So they've, they, they, they've learned how to convince us of this since we were born. I mean, they kind of got a head start. I mean, our families were teaching us and bringing us forward with the Father. But darkness has been programming us from TV and from books and from music and from audio and everything. And we're stuck in this society. But we give away our win. Okay. So we were born into that. But we got to get it back. And we have from time to time. But we got to get it back all the time. Darkness is under our feet. We know that. It's in the Word. How do we get to the point to do it all the time? We got to remember the God that we serve. We got to remember that the God that we serve is sitting beside us right now. We got to make this very conscious to know that he's with us, that he understands the thoughts of our heart. See, 
if he's beside us and we're aware he's beside us, the mind and the flesh are going to have a lot harder time because your spirit is going to stand at attention. Could you imagine if God is beside you? You think you'd make as many mistakes? Well, we wouldn't be as good as Jesus, but we would be a heck of a lot better, wouldn't we? It's like when prophet talks about, oh, if lightning would just strike every time that we sinned, you know what? Well, I don't think we'd sin that much. Well, no, because your feet would be black, you'd be sizzling and smoky, and your heart would be pounding like crazy. And you know what? You didn't have time to think about anything else but God. So, okay. But we can't see him, right? We're stuck in this three-dimensional world. But we have this other dimension, the spirit world, power, uh, forces. We've got the word. I mean, but you can't see it. So the mind and the flesh are kind of like, huh, and I don't understand. I, you talk this big talk, I, just, I don't see it. I don't understand it. But you've got to use this mind and this body to be able to work for you. So you've got to get them into submission. Submission. It's a process. See, your, your mind and your flesh never will understand the other kingdom, the other realm, mentioned the the kingdom principles this is why they're at enmity okay this is why the enmity is here but you got to win you got to win over them so you know what let's put it in perspective let's use our imaginations for a minute okay so you have your heart okay that's you And then you have these two things that work for you, your mind and your flesh, okay? So bear with me. See your heart, yourself, you you are a knight. And you have on the armor of God, right? You got the helmet, as I hope. We got the the shield. We got the sword. We got the breastplate. We got the boots. We're we're shiny. I mean, we're confident. We're strong. We're standing there. We got it. And then you have these two things that are with you. You, 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 you. you got your flesh and you got your mind. Eh, they don't have the armor on, let's say, but you know what? They're strong, manly, tough. You know, they got it covered. And then along comes this thing, right? And all you hear is... Raw, 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 raw. And it's real tiny. It's like a little dog it comes up. And its name is called Circumstance, Okay. So it comes up and it starts barking. And your spirit's standing here and it's got it under control. And then in between you and circumstance is your mind and your flesh. And that little thing comes up barking just so loud. It reminds me of my dog next door, my brother. It's a tiny little dog, big chest. It's about this tall, about maybe 14 inches by like eight. And, and, and he thinks he's 18 feet tall. Well, this thing is like that. It comes up and it starts barking. Well, the, the mind, this big burly mind jumps into the arms of the flesh, scared to death of this circumstance coming. I mean, I mean can you imagine a big burly guy jumping out because his little dog's coming named Circumstance? But that's how they see it. They're scared of it. The, the spirit, the heart, you, has to stay in control and say, look, we're just going to say, uh, it's just circumstance, don't worry about it. Uh, we're just going to take control over that, and we're going to tell it to go away. And so the mind, the flesh participate in their, their, their process and submit, and circumstance has to go away. The problem is, from time to time, that armor gets heavy. Your, your heart, your spirit just kind of, kind of gets a little weary in well-doing, kind of goes back a little, falls asleep. And circumstance comes up again. <laughs> This little tiny thing. And your mind and flesh, well, they didn't bother to wake up. The spirit's tired. Jumps up and they just say, whatever you want, circumstance, we'll do it. And they submit. And they submit to this thing that is so tiny that can't beat them. It can't beat you who you are. I mean, and it's an interesting image, imagination, to put together to understand how powerful you are, how you have all the tools and this armor and the power and the word and these spiritual forces. And you got to work within this clave and body, powerful. 
And that mind and that body, that flesh, the soulish realm, is scared of darkness coming along, circumstance, and it's just this tiny little thing with a big bark. It's amazing, isn't it? But we, what do we do? We give place. We give place. So, what we need to do is, we need to find a way to make God more real. If we can make God more real to us, what are we going to do? We're, we're not going to fall asleep. We're going to stand at attention like we talked about. And we're going to stay at attention. So, if you pray and you seek God, you know that He's there, right? I mean, it says, if you praise God, He will inhabit your praises. His presence will be there. That's scripture. You know, so this, what do we have to do? We have to put our will, right, a force, towards the Father. So this is our, our spirit being in control. So our flesh and our mind, you know, they often get manipulated by darkness, circumstance, that, that little thing that shouldn't do it. So when you put your will to pray and you praise the Father, and you engage in that, what happens? You know what? You can feel his presence. And I'm not talking praying for a minute, okay? I'm talking glorifying and praising, spending time with the Father. You can feel the air, the warmth when you seek him. He makes his presence known, and he does, and he says he does. Now, it's not a fan or an air conditioner or something like that. That's what your mind and flesh might try and tell you to interpret it as. But as you know, you know, your spirit, a peaceful presence of God is there. A warmth, an air. Well, that's what we've got to find. That's what we have to be with. That's how we keep God's presence around us and close to us. Close to us. See, 1 Corinthians 28.9. If you seek him, he will be found of thee. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. So if you forsake, right? Meaning if you forsake him in your imagination, as you're creating these images, as you're going through your life, as you're having thoughts, right? Because a thought, you don't have to have a three-dimensional thing to create an image because that's what we're taught in images. No, a thought can go through. What are you attaching to it? Right? Are you forsaking him in your thoughts? And your mind right now? Are you losing him? Are you losing his presence through the day because you're not checking with your heart what you know to be true and applying it to every single thought? So I said it, I kind of said it like the flesh side, eh? every single, like it's like it's, no, I should be saying like every single thought, this is great. See, it's not a burden. Well, to the spirit, to the flesh, it's got to get whipped into shape until it con confirms it's not a burden. You don't want to lose his presence. I mean, you're not going to lose your eternal life, right? And mistakes with the father like that. But you don't want to lose his presence. You know, you got to bring it to remembrance. You know, and understand and keep to your mind Bring to remembrance that every imagination of the heart will be revealed. Remind yourself of that. Remind yourself of that. Okay? Because we talked about trying to keep God's presence close. That's a good way. Remind yourself of that. See, in the process of the teaching of Prophet CDs, in some of the earlier series, we started talking to people about getting their mouth under control. Anyone remember getting their mouth under control? One hand, two hands. <laughs> Someone's got more hands than anyone else on this planet. There's hands everywhere. You know what? I, okay, my hand's up too. That I better put that up for sure. But you got to get your mouth under control. You got to quit saying things that don't line up with the Word of God. Remember going through that in those earlier series? In the, in the beginner, beginner steps? You know, we're in the deep water now, right? But people say, you know what? As we're going through it, yeah, but I'm, I'm still learning some of the series and stuff like that. But this is where we understand tra transition again, like we talked about earlier. You go back to transition. You got to understand. You're going to go through it. You're going to fail. You know, you're going to make mistakes, but you're going to you're going to stay alert. You're going to stay at attention. 
right? Because you're keeping God's presence there. And you're going to, what? You're going to stop putting that out of your mouth. You know? And you got so much better, you're going to make mistakes. Okay, we'll give it to you. But you know what? You're doing better. You're doing great. See, we need to line up with the Word of God. How? By stop confessing, right? Things that stop your blessing. So we talked about the mouth and we, we stopped confessing things that stopped our, right, our blessings. So let's look at the word confessing as a verb, to disclose. To disclose something damaging or inconvenient to oneself. Okay. Uh, oh. Another word like it is uh, acknowledge. And, uh, or to acknowledge belief or faith, right, or profess. So... We're not confessing things that are thoughts out into this realm, okay? We're not going through and disclosing things that could be damaging and inconvenient that are happening up here and putting it out there, okay? We, we stopped by checking our mouths and not, you know, checking it before you go and say it, checking with the word, and we got away from that. And we did a good job. But now... What do we got to do? We got to go to the, to the mind and we got to understand, okay, we stop putting out and creating and letting darkness know and everyone else know what's going on. Now we have this internal thing. Now we have this image. Now we have this thing that we have to tackle within ourselves. We're, we're, we're no longer speaking things that don't line up with the world. We're no longer telling the other kingdom, the realm, anyone who's listening, that darkness is correct and God is wrong, right? We're now denying circumstance. Remember the rah, 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 circumstance? We're not agreeing with them. But you know what? We still have this battle raging inside of our, our head, right? So it's so important to understand that we understand these concepts. So now that we're a little more understanding how imagination works and, and, uh, and what makes up an imagination and the things that are connected to it, and it's more complex than just a, a, a three-dimensional image, right? So we, we've addressed our mouth and what we're confessing. So we've got to get to the root of this thing. And we've got to straighten that out. So we can confess in our mind things, right, that are detrimental to ourselves, like we said with the definition of confession, in our images. Now, darkness does not understand and cannot hear or know anything, like within your mind. It can make the, the familiar spirit and darkness suggestions all the time, but it doesn't know what's going on until you act it out, right? I mean, they really know what's going on if you turn around and tell them to shut up and get lost in Yeshua's name, right? Well, then they know for sure, hey, I'm out of here. But they'll sit here and do this all day, right? And they don't know, they kind of know it's working because you haven't kicked them out. But you know what? They're, they're watching to see what you do and what you say and what type of effect they're having. And they might change the rhetoric a little bit to try and steer you in the right direction. And that's them driving the bus, right? That's them driving the bus. So here, let's, let's simple example. Okay, guys, this one's for you. There's a beautiful woman. Her number is 10. That's how we judge things in this world, 1 to 10. And I see Prophet Darren is looking at my sister, his wife. I, that's wonderful. So let me keep going with this. I'm glad you did that. So what do we do? Does your mind say, am I going to jump in bed with her? Does your mind say she has a nice uh, part? You know? Well, I, I, look, I, I was born in this world, okay? I, I, I'm not denying I came up in this world. You know, what's going on? What do you think? What image from what thoughts, right, pass through your mind? I mean, just a minute, ladies. You're not off the hook. I also grew up in this world, and I understand what ladies think and what ladies do. So you've gone through the same things. 
that guy, 10, got a nice, hey, it's the world we're in and I'm coming out of. But the mind, the mind, the mind, the mind. See, your flesh is always going to rise up and come against the thing of God. Come against. We shouldn't be thinking those things. But it tries to, right? It tries to. See, your thought... So, wait. See, what do you see... Here's one. Here's one. Okay. I need a drink of water. What do you see when you see somebody that you don't like? Okay. Now we're talking about see. We're past the mouth. We understand the, the, the complexity of image. We understand circumstance. Now we're getting, this is, you know what, guys? We just went a little deeper. And now the water, it's up to, the, it's, I think it's up to the knees right now. It's a good thing we got these Holy Ghost hip waders on, hip waders. So we're getting a little deeper. So we have these people. Now, it, we don't like them. Why? We had ought with them, ah, argument, whatever. Maybe we didn't forgive them for something. Okay? Or you're jealous. Okay? Whatever it is, they come. Thought comes. Image. Thought. Image. Same thing. And guess what? You attach to that image, right, that unforgiveness, that jealousy, that ought, whatever. Okay. So, so that is, is now part of the situation and the image. And you bring that up that into the present moment. Now, it's something from the past. You attach it to an image. The person's here. And, and you're starting to relive. They're walking up to you. I mean, say they're 100 feet away and you caught them. You've got 100 feet to deal with this. And you're staring at them. You can't run. You can't go anywhere. You're trapped. They're coming. And you stand there and you look. And then all of a sudden comes up the image, the thought. And you got, oh, no. Remember that thing that they did? Oh, here they come. Oh, and all that thought and all that gets conjured up. You're now reliving a past event of something. You don't have to. But you chose to attach, and I'll call it the fruit of darkness, to an image, and you're going to relive it. Now, if you would have done what you're supposed to in this shining armor, your spirit, in control, alert, awake, in the presence of God, ah, circumstance, get lost, name Yeshua. Father God, I replace that with this image of this person, and I love them. And, and you know what? Hey, they went from... Seven, they were 100 feet away, now 75 feet. So 25 feet, now you got caught. And then the next 75 feet, my math is good, eh? It comes up, and here they are in front of you. And you had 75% of the time to be able to build that up and prepare. And you know what? It works. And we have the right image and the right circumstances. And we're not going to relive this pain, this past. Why relive the pain in the past? Over and over and over and over and over again. Why not take the present moment and create something attaching the fruit of the Spirit, put your will toward it, have faith in it, which are forces, and move that forward the way that you need to and deny wah, 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 circumstance coming in, the familiar spirits or whatever else, the programming. Why? Why do we do this? Because it's darkness's trick. It's what it wants. It's it stealing your power and authority, your win that you already have. Oh, whoops. The computer keeps going out and jumping pages here. No, wait. Uh, okay. It's funny, my computer went off and I hit the, uh, the up button, so it jumped a bunch of pages. Okay, here, we're going to go here. I got it. So now we're going to get a little deeper, okay? Hebrews 4.12. 
For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit, huh? and the joints of the marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So it is the very discerner. The word is, okay? Because that's what we're talking about right now. We talked about being able to discern, being able to understand. So the word is, what's the word? Yeshua. It's one and the same. It's one and the same. So Yeshua is the discerner. See, we have to understand, and again, creating another image, is Yeshua is on the right hand of God, right? That's where he is. He's our, he's our advocator, okay? Darkness is coming up, and darkness is coming up and complaining about us, right? So darkness comes up and says, they're acting this way. They're what? They're doing this. They're doing that. And God, what does he know? He knows the thoughts and intents of our heart. Darkness doesn't know that. They're outside of that. So they don't have all the information. God has all the information. God has all the information. So God knows what you can handle. When the tempter comes and wants to tempt you, and he says, yeah, no, no. You know what? He knows. He knows more. It's such an interesting situation. God knows the thoughts and intents of your heart. Darkness does not. The purpose of temptation is they are set to help you grow. God knows. He's not going to put you in a situation that you cannot handle. So let's stop right here and acknowledge something, okay? And it's real important that we do this. So by acknowledging it, I'm going to say something and I would like you to say it. We don't stand a chance of trying to live in holiness and not evil on our own. We don't. We don't. We can't work this and get this done on our own. It's not possible. God is watching us. He's watching our mouth. He's watching our mind. He's watching our hearts, and he's with us all the time, whether we're conscious of this or not. But you mean to tell me that God is judging every moment of every day? Absolutely he is. Absolutely he is. See, we can't speak the right things, okay? Speaking the right things, and think the wrong things, okay? When we do this, that means that we cannot manage our heart. We have to manage our heart. That's who we really are. You, you, you have to learn to manage your mind, right? And you can manage your heart. You have to be able to do that. It's a process, but you have to be aware of how it all works. You have to be aware of the pieces. You have to aware how imagination works. You have to know how the kingdom system works. And you have to know the process within it goes through to be in creation being a creator here on this planet with the Father. All right, so we're going to go a little deeper. So I think, are we up to the waist yet? Approximately, we, we're getting up to the waist, eh? I mean, when we first walked in the water, what was it? We could kick it a little and it wasn't a big deal. Now you get to the knee, uh, now we're at the water. We're like, wait, if it gets up here, it could take us under. This could take us under. It's a little different. It's fun in the beginning. So we're going to go to Hebrews 4.12. Thoughts and intents of the heart is what it ended with. See, we have to be conscious of the thoughts and intents of our hearts. And this is the absolute very key, okay, when we talk about the imagination. This is the key to this series right here. We have to be conscious. You have to be aware of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And if you can do that, you're going to win at this imagination thing. So let's talk about the word conscious. Let's talk about the definition because we have to be conscious of it. So having a mental facilities not dulled by sleep, faintness, or stupor. Well, wait a minute. Remember we talked about us over here, right? 
not falling asleep, being weary and well daring, doing with all that armor and everything on. Okay, we have to be awake. We can't fall asleep. Being conscious after the anesthesia wore off. Well, that's interesting. Because darkness is what? Tricking us all the time and trying to trick us? Isn't that like anesthesia? We've got to be conscious, get that away, and remain aware of their tactics. Perceiving, apprehending, or noticing with a degree of control through our observation. Conscious. Okay? So those are the things we have to have about the thoughts and intents of our heart. Right? I know in other series, uh, the heart... We talk about the cake we get on there. We have to get the cake off, right? We're talking like unto the same thing here, okay? We have to be conscious. We have to have that clean and swept. So again, making correct thoughts and intents of the heart, making that more real to us and more valuable than what? Than the circumstance, than what's going on in this world out here. Making more real right? The kingdom principles. See, until we can correct the thoughts of our heart, you cannot correct your life actions. I'll say that again. Until you can correct the thoughts of your heart, okay, your life actions, what, what you speak, what you do, what you put into the world, isn't going to be correct. Okay? Because you have to take and you have to use your heart and you have to apply the Father's principles, right? You've got to apply the fruit of the Spirit. You've got to put your will correctly with Him, right? Your faith in Him. You've got to use those forces and wrap it around that image in the situation and you've got to speak that into the situation. Not what the situation is telling you. Or person, or thing, moment. You can stand and confess all day, right? Remember about the word confess, the definition? But if your image is incorrect, right, you're tied up in a bunch of darkness. And if you're tied up in a bunch of darkness, God's not going to be able to bless you. You're not going to get anywhere with God. But we talked about transition. We're not going to condemn ourselves. We know that we're going to fail. But we have a solid understanding that the Father is with us, that the Father is going to help us through. We understand that we're going to fail. But we have set ourselves to what? Remember the thoughts of intent of our heart. And we're going to push that forward. We're going to make that real and correct it as we go. Sounds good. You know what? We're going to, we're going to end here today. And end in prayer, and we'll finish up next time. Father God, Father God, we just thank you, Father. Thank you for the teaching. Thank you for the understanding of the image, Father, and the, and the power and the tool that you have given us, Father. And may we make it our tool, Father, to benefit you, and your kingdom, so people can see us blessed from you, so you can be glorified, Father, so you can be glorified. Thank you, and amen.